Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being at the monthly technical steering committee meeting from the Averages project. I have to show this slide for some seconds. Um, so in case competitors are here, please don't do something which is violating antitrust policy. Uh, but let's right jump into the topic Everest. Um, typical agenda is quick recap, what we are doing, what's new, what's next, and then we can dive into the discussion. So what's Everest, quick reminder for everyone, we are part of the Linux Foundation Energy, uh, which is a big community around software projects driving the renewable energy transition. And we are the interface to cars and all the future local edge devices where you can regulate energy. Uh, but cars is a good starting point because they are already so complex and they're a big single demand user. And why are we doing that? Because this entire EV charging industry is super fragmented. You have so many multiple isolated solutions. There are standards, but they're often inconsistently integrated or developed. Um, and that means you're wasting a lot of time and money if everyone develops everything themselves and the implementation are so pure that customers are suffering because it's sometimes working, sometimes not. Um, so what software am I talking about? This is all the software within the charging point, connecting power electronics, local energy, remote re energy resourcing, uh, displays, maybe some apps, and different kind of cloud interface. You can find all details on our GitHub site. And we also have some um, detailed explanation how everything works on our YouTube channel. Uh, ah, again, always missing the slide. So yes, we have all these different things. We're connecting to the charger. And for each connection, there are multiple different interfaces you might want to use to attach this. And we also have a module, module system where you can basically replacing a um, power meter with a third protocol with another power meter with another protocol. So you can all do this by drag and drop and have a really flexible system which is adaptable to any hardware. And yeah, so we're not doing this, implementing all the standards because we think the standards are great. So you could argue you just need a better standard which covers everything which is perfect. And then there's no need for open source, but we think then we will end up in that situation. So it will be just one standard more. It won't solve the actual problem. Um, to help you and your, your projects, we are offering you as a company, Pionix, a small commercial break, a development reference station, um, in principle, Everest runs in every hardware. There are plenty of uh, customer projects and yeah, basically projects to be announced where this is running on different hardware versions. But in case you want to get your um, fingers dirty, you want to start playing with the code base, I think this Charter Dev Kit is one, maybe one really good option for you to start. It's not cost optimized, it's feature optimized, so you can do with it whatever you want and go in every direction. So, but now let's switch to what's new. And one update is we have been on the Make Contain Hackers Festival in the Netherlands last month. Uh, we had a really nice village with five different EVs at peak time. We brought some other random people, brought some, and we tested all of them. Oh, one second, it's entering. And so we tested all those vehicles. And we also had sites for interesting workshops around local energy management. And we even had a talk about how everything is going. You can find that on YouTube. And there have been also really weird self-made EVs like this one. And in case you have not been on a Hacker Festival before, it's really fun to be there. I think the next big one will be next year in Germany. And then uh, four years from now, it will be again in the Netherlands. So but let's switch to Kai uh, to tell you what's new in the code base. Yeah, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our uh, type support that has uh, been teasered, I think, the last time, but has now finally been uh, merged because I'm uh, back from vacation, had to had some time to take a look at it. Um, so basically, this um, type support uh, is there so you can have multiple different um, type uh, definitions that you can use in other uh, module contexts. Uh, it has um, support by, for um, like how we do uh, our thing is basically we have uh, interfaces that are um, written as uh, JSON files, and you can um, yeah describe uh, your 
parameters and uh, return values and variables and stuff like that that get published um, via this um, this JSON file. And there you can have, um, for example, object types that uh, will then later in C++ code be represented by structures. Uh, you can have uh, optional and required fields. Um, the optional fields uh, are exposed as boost optionals, but will probably, once we switch to C++17, uh, be done via STD optional. Um, we also have array support, which just gets transparently um, yeah, represented by STD vectors, and um, enum support as well as normal C++ enums. And here in the bottom, you can see one of those uh, interfaces, which has a reference to one of these types for the um, reason argument. And this reason argument has a um, session cancellation reason enum as its, um, as its uh, type. And this is def uh, defined in another, um, in another file. Uh, you can switch to the next slide. Um, these files uh, are, uh, are located in a new top-level directory that we call um, types in the Everest core repository. And there's already a few um, implementations uh, in there um, for some common types that we uh, use in some of our interfaces at, um, at the moment. So next slide, please. Um, to illustrate uh, the kind of savings of uh, and increase in re readability, um, we have is this um, power meter um, type uh, that we've defined. And uh, on the left, this really uh, large diff you can see is basically whenever you used a, um, a interface that used a power meter type, you pretty much had to copy this part into your interface and um, make sure that it uh, is up to date with the uh, other interfaces, or else things might subtly start to break. Um, and now it's pretty much the uh, one reference on the right to the power meter type, and everything just uh, works exactly like it worked before, just with uh, a lot less duplication of um, the code that you need to write in your interface files. So um, next slide, please. Um, now uh, to show you um, the uh, object uh, types. Uh, on the left, you can see a telemetry um, type with six parameters uh, or with six um, properties. Um, the temperature, fan RPM, supply voltage, 12 volt, minus 12 volt, RCD current, and relay on. And um, these, uh, this information then gets uh, automatically generated into C++ um, code uh, on the right. You see this um, the structure with all the six, um, yeah, with all the six properties in it. It um, reuses the descriptions uh, you give it in the um, description field in the types uh, file as like inline documentation comments. So you can actually kind of describe what the things are doing. And there's uh, also some convenience uh, functions to um, convert this structure to a endoman JSON object or convert from it because internally we use this JSON library a lot. And it's actually also really convenient uh, sometimes to directly manipulate uh, this um, this JSON in some points. Um, can switch to the next slide. Um, here on the left, you can see a um, event enum from the um, board support uh, type file. Here, it's literally just a uh, an array of all the uh, possible um, enums. And on the right, uh, this code then gets uh, generated into like a yeah, pretty standard C++ enum class. Uh, and on the next slide, you can um, you can see how um, this then can be used. On the left, uh, the old version, because it in a JSON schema, a enum is pretty much just a string with a um, with a narrowing of the available uh, yeah words you can put in it. Uh, we basically just had a string parameter and then always had to do string comparisons uh, to see which kind of event um, came in. 
And on the right with the new type support, you can see it's uh, getting you, you're getting it as a like proper enum, and you can um, yeah properly uh, test um, for the yeah enum fields. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it about this um, type support. And I'll uh, give over to Anton, who I think will talk a little bit about our efforts in the CMake uh, department. Right. So um, Everest itself, it's, it contains uh, multiple libraries, and um, all of them are written in C++, and there's the build system we chose a CMake. And uh, what I did in the last week was basically refactoring some of the CMake files so that they adhere to the so-called modern CMake standard and which basically means that now it's much more easier to also use these um, libraries in external projects for example and it also makes it easier for the build system to link to these libraries and so on and for now the um, basically the package manager we're using is called uh, Everest dependency manager so this basically pulls down automatically uh, dependencies that our libraries need and <clears throat> for packaging Everest on, M and on embedded platforms uh, it's sometimes it's a bit of a burden to use this tool and so it's now optional for the core libraries so you can switch it off and you can choose for yourself how you want to um, fetch the additional dependencies that you need and also concerning uh, open embedded uh, layers for embedded platforms, um, I wrote bitbake recipes for all of the Everest libraries. So it's also so they can basically use directly without any patching or whatever due to this refactoring of the CMake files. Okay, then the next slide, please. And with this, also the cross compilation integration got much more better of the Everest core, which is basically the main um, user application, which uses all of our libraries. And this now can be, I would say, a bit more easily <coughs> cross-compiled with the standard uh, tool chains that you get. So for example, for Raspberry, you can use the tool chain and basically just compile it in, in, in one go. And I also checked, for example, for the Open Embedded Freescale SDK that's also just working out of the box. And right now, under development is still some kind of deployment. So when you build this, that you also get um, one package, like one tarball that you can extract for development on your target machine and just keep it running. So this is basically this deployment to the target is there is of course this developer um, use case where you just want to you change something in the code and then you want to cross compile it and put it onto your embedded device and check if it's it's working. Of course, that's also possible to use, for example, open embedded uh, the um, the packaging you can you have there or for Debian you can use apt to pull in these different packages, but this is much more complicated to fetch several packages and keep an eye on the version that you're using. So for the development workflow, it's quite nice to have just one table that you can just extract and you have all the updates and don't need to care about um, all different libraries that Everest needs. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Anton. So um, what's next? Um, also, this has not changed much over the last course of the last weeks. That's our rough roadmap, and it's typically all, always pending customer and or community prioritizations. And um, so right now, in the background, we are porting Everest to a couple of different hardware platforms uh, together with different companies. And um, some of that will be AC charging, some of that will be DC charging. So. There will be a lot of stabilization and, let's say, customization to real world happening over the course of the next months. And yeah, so let's see um, if there's any interest here in um, adding things. We are super open for everything. 
We also talk to some open source developers who might be interested in donating eBus. So, so let's see what turns out. And yeah, having said that, our next um, TSC, so the next update meeting will be 22 uh, of September at 5 p.m. Central European time. If you want to join that, sign up on the Everest mailing list, uh, you will get updates. And also, we are meeting basically every week in the public world um, with the Pionix development team, and everyone external is also happy to join us. Um, invites also for this are also available through the mailing list. It's 10 a.m. CET every Tuesday. And having said that, I'm happy to dive in the discussion. I will stop the recording now, and then you are free and speak up.